-hmm. Take it away. Okay, so my topic obviously is over endoscopic examination of racehorses. So I'm just going to go over this, um, the parts of the scope real quick. Um, this is the part where the vet is going to look through. These knobs right here can turn the tip of the scope to left and right and up and down. Um, the actual uh, camera is right down here. Um, and this tube is fed by hand through the horse's nose down into um, their trachea. This part down here is where you would attach a light source so you could see, obviously, because there's no light. Um, so the reason we do scoping is to check for reasons why the racehorse is having decreased performance, um, troubles breathing, sounds, um, irregular breathing problems. Um, you can do dynamic scoping, which is this top picture right here. It's where the scope is actually attached to the wow. horse while they're training. In this picture, they're training. Um, obviously, you shouldn't do it while they're racing. Mm -hmm. um, and the vet can watch on real time <coughs> on a video screen what the horse's airways look like. Um, most that's of what that's neat because so like that's transmitting to some receiver someplace, right? Yeah. And you can make a recording mm -hmm. and watch it in real so time. So that's real time, so that's really helpful. Um, it's a little more in depth and more complicated because you have to have it hooked up and stuff. Yeah. Um, most of what we did on the track was um, this standing scoping, which is right down here. We would do that right after the horse got done with training. We call it breezing out on the track. So they've just worked out. Um, we're going to check what their lungs and stuff look like. Um, you can see the vet looking through, um, the technician holding the horse. And so yeah, this is most of what we did. We did it right after training or right after they finished the race. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few of the conditions we were looking for um, in the treatments that we did. So exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage is caused by extremely high pressure in the horse's capillaries in their lungs. Basically they're breathing so hard and their blood pressure is so high that the capillaries burst inside of their lungs. Um, we refer to these horses as bleeders. Um, as seen in this picture, this is a scope done, uh, this is a horse, horse's trachea, A up here is a very mild case, just a few drops of blood right here. Um, we use a number scale, one being very mild and five being extreme, as in this picture. Um, the whole summer I was out on track, I never saw a case as extreme as, um, to the point where the blood was actually coming out of the nose. Oh, you never saw it? No, okay. I never saw it. Um, we definitely did see a lot of medium cases like seen in D. Um, if they had very severe cases, then we usually tell them that they shouldn't be racing anymore because mm -hmm. it's doing a lot of damage. So some of the treatments we do is um, furosemide, <coughs> here we go. Um, commonly referred to as Salix or Lasix, which is right here. Um, we would do this before the races. It's a diuretic, so um, it makes, makes the horse urinate, which decreases fluid um, in their blood, therefore decreasing the pressure in the capillaries. Um, so if we had scoped a horse during its morning training and it had a lot of blood, we would probably incre increase the dosage by a cc or two of the Salix before a race. Um, Obviously, before we turn to medications, we would try using a nasal, nasal dilator band. I've seen on this horse right here, it's this white band. Mm -hmm. um, it just opens up their nose to make it easier to breathe, so we kind of um, try and help their muscles relax in their lungs. Um, kind of as a last resort, we use Stop 20, because again, we try to stay away from uh, drugs and medications. It's supposed to strengthen the capillaries. Really? Okay. How is that administered then, the STOP-20? Um, I believe it's IM, but I'm not Really? Sure. So you injected IM and it's supposed to make the capillaries, hmm. Yes. It might be, it might be IV, I can't remember. Yeah, okay. Shit, okay. So. I just, yeah. Salix is IV though, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next thing that we saw commonly is left laryngeal hemiplegia. Um, it's basically just paralysis of the laryngeal. Um, right here on the right, this is a normal horse trachea. It's nice, it's got stuff labeled. And on this picture, you can see, um, this is actually the left side of the horse since you're looking down its throat, and you can see that this muscle is kind of lax right here. Um, we refer to them as roars because as they exhale and inhale, um, the air vibrates um, this flap of skin, and it kind of sounds like 
they're roaring. Now, is there a reason why the left one, not the right? Um, I couldn't. I looked, and it's just the, the left is like where it starts more commonly, and it can progress to the right. But okay. I'm not sure why. There's something it maybe anatomical the where the yeah, left is I thought a, that was interesting. A little weaker or something. And so something like this, um, we would be told like the exercise rider would tell the trainer like the sources were roaring, and then yeah. we would come out and check. Okay. So the treatment we do for them, um, huh. if it's a mild case, they usually don't need treatment. Um, we just keep it monitored. Um, if it's severe, then we'll do what's called a tieback surgery, which is using permanent sutures to literally tie back the laryngeal muscles so it doesn't block the airway. Um, you go in under the horse's neck, so here's a picture during surgery, and they would go right under here under the throat latch area of the horse. Um, we never prescribed this, but I saw online that some people did acupuncture on mouth cases, and they said that that was helpful. Um, the next thing is epiglottic entrapment. Um, again, this is a normal picture on the right. I have it for reference on all my diagrams. Um, you can see there's a flap of skin um, under the epiglottis, and here it is actually flipped over on top of the epiglottis. Um, it can cause respiratory noise, but it usually doesn't cause decrease in performance. Um, as you can see, the airway is still open, so like I said, it doesn't usually cause decreased performance. But if a person's trying to sell a horse and it sounds like they have a breathing problem, it can decrease the price. So the most common treatment is surgery. Just to cut that small flap of skin, they can use um, lasers like being shown in this picture, or they can just use a scalpel. It's fairly simple. Um, or again, you can try acupuncture. Now, could you go back to the other slide? Yeah. And just on the normal, Explain where that flap of skin is coming from. Yeah, so you can't see it on the normal one. Yeah. It actually lies under oh, the epiglottis. Okay, so then it... Yeah, and so then it can get flipped over. This is actually like the very top of the epiglottis. So like, oh, so there's that would be like much. right here in this wow. picture. Wow, okay. So yeah, they also um, refer to it as like a slipper because it kind of looks like it kind yeah. of slides okay. over. Wow. Um, the other thing we look for is dorsal displacement of the soft palate. Um, we refer to this as choking down, or like the exercise rider said, this horse is choking down on me. Um, because it's most commonly heard at the end of a race, um, when they're breathing the hardest. Um, the soft palate actually gets flipped up completely over the epiglottis, so here you can't see the epiglottis at all. Um, and when the horse exhales, the trachea actually gets like completely blocked, so it sounds like they're choking. Um, so towards the end of the race, it's often described as a horse is running well and not a, like just like hits a switch and just shuts down. Um, so yeah, that can be caused by um, palate laxity or inflammation of the epiglottis, um, excessive movement of the larynx, and opening their mouth while racing. Yeah, no, that brings up a point. Horses cannot breathe through their mouths, correct? correct? Do you guys know that? Horses cannot breathe through their mouths. They have to take it in through the nostrils, mm -hmm. the narrows. I find that fascinating because I learned that last spring by somebody. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in a lot of pictures um, when Rachel's like leaf, uh, reaching forward that their mouths are open, but they're not breathing. They're just mm -hmm. like pushing against the bit. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a couple of treatments. Again, we'll try and advise treatments before surgery, um, like a figure eight nose band, which is pictured in the top, oops, top picture right here. It's this white cross looking band. Um, that's to try and keep the horse from opening its mouth while it races. Um, we can also use tongue ties, which kind of keeps the tongue out of the way um, in anti-inflammatories because any irritation can cause the soft palate to displace. Um, as a last resort, we'll do a surgery. Um, I was actually <coughs> part of a myectomy surgery on the track. Um, we do it while the horse is standing. Um, we just give them lots of sedation, but they are staying on their own. They're not under general anesthesia. Um, we go in under the neck, and as this picture shows, we actually cut this fairly large muscle right here, and it's attached to a soft palate and doesn't allow it to move on its own. Um, this is like a last resort it does have a fairly high like 75 percent success rate since it is a muscle it can actually grow back together but that's 
like a long time and usually the horse is done with its racing career. Um, this is just another muscle that they can cut as well. Um, ep epiglottic augmentation is when they actually reduce the size of the epiglottis because if the epiglottis is smaller and the palate displaces, sometimes it can fix itself um, just on its own. And now the purpose of the epiglottis is when the horse is eating, it kind of covers the trachea, mm -hmm. tracheal opening, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we wouldn't re remove it completely. This yeah. would only be if the horse already had like an enlarged epiglottis. Okay. okay. If it had a normal size one, then we wouldn't reduce it anymore. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And then for the sub epiglottic cyst, it pretty much explains it all. Um, this is the cyst right here. It's mm -hmm. under the epiglottis. It's going to make noise while the horse is moving because the airway will be partially obstructed. Um, but other than that, it's pretty harmless, but um, it can cause, if it's big enough, it can cause difficulties with them eating and it can cause pneumonia and if debris is getting stuck in the airways, like if the um, epiglottis can't close all the way. Um, so how we treat that is we just remove it surgically. And the last thing we usually check for is uh, guttural pouch infections. <laughs> the guttural pouch is not in all species. So horses are one of the species that have guttural pouches. It's below um, the base of the ears. They believe it's for cooling the brain because as you can see in this picture, this is a carotid artery. Um, it's extremely close to the surface right here. <coughs> so it's exposed to all the air that flows um, through the guttural pouches. Um, so those are air filled. Mm -hmm. The pouches they, are yeah. air filled. Yeah, they get filled with air. Um, so yes, we check for infections because if they have a guttural pouch infection, it's going to cause inflammation, which like can be the cause of um, DDSP or displacement of the soft palate. Now, how do you check that pouch? Um, you can use it. You can check it with a scope um, while you're in the horse's like before you enter the horse's trachea, there's two little like skin flaps and you can actually take the scope like inside of it and look inside of them. Really? Yeah. So they they communicate with the mouth then? It means um, the air that's in the mouth could go into the pouch and, I mean, I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to picture. Yeah, like the, the air like through their nose. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. Oh, it has to go through the nose and then get to the pouches. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you have to be extremely careful. We usually just put like the very tip of the scope in because if you do rupture the carotid artery, then the horse can bleed out. Yeah. So, and they also have lots of nerves in this area right here that run along the surface. And obviously, you don't want to nick any nerves because that can cause permanent damage. Hmm. So the treatment that we do if the ghetto pouch is infected, we flush it with antibiotics and saline. Um, this instrument right here is fed through the scope. Um, so it's through the tip of the scope and you would fill a syringe, we usually did like a 60 cc syringe, with <coughs> about 20 cc's of genocin, which is just the antibiotics that we use, and saline wash. And you would attach the syringe to here and basically push as hard as you could to flush the infection out of the horse's nose. Um, it would run out their nose, their horse would be down, their head would be down because they are sedated. It's going procedure. in the pouch and then it's going to go up the nasal cavities. Yes. 20 mils per pouch on each side? Uh, yeah. Wow. So you do the saline first and then the antibiotics? Um, we usually draw them up together. So oh, we like drop the saline and okay. then from like a bag, so it's a mixture then. Bag, yeah, then we drop the saline. Wow. And then we would push um, air through the tube to make sure that everything is wow. <laughs> Amazing, you had great experience. I'm yeah. jealous. And these are my sources. Okay, so you did this though. I mean, you were there on the race. Yeah, I was, was here. You? We did this. I was a veterinary assistant at Indiana Grain Racetrack okay. for an entire summer, okay. and we did this basically every single day. Yeah, so we were looking wow. at horses. great yeah. experience. Okay, any questions, comments? I'll let you point to people. Yeah, so if a horse is not a racehorse, do any of these make a difference? Um, these are most commonly seen in racing breeds when like horses are breathing very heavily and there's lots of stress um, or like larger breed horses like draft horses. Some like barrel, race, barrel racers see problems like this but if it's just like a trail horse or th things like that you're not going to see it any problems except like if it has a large cyst that's blocking its airway. Because the race horses and, the, and I know draft horses are used for poles. Yeah exactly. So if you're like 
taking the horse to like the extreme performance yeah. than these high things exertion pop. is when you would yeah. see <coughs> all these things except per se the cyst because that yeah. can just yeah. happen on any <coughs> yeah does it like cause any sort of discomfort when you like use the scope because I know like in humans like especially in kids that are younger they'll like you know knock them out for it yeah if we usually don't sedate them it's like uncomfortable but not painful okay. like if you can imagine having just like a tube stuck down your nose it's going to feel really weird um unless we have a horse that's really aggressive we try not to sedate them because the recovery is always a problem yeah we ne well for this procedure we never put them under general anesthesia just be like mild sedation but we try to keep the cost minimum and mm -hmm. it's really unnecessary um, we can twitch the horses which is where we put a rope or a chain around their lip and twist it um, that's kind of like a pressure point on horses, but they basically submit to that. Um, or we can put a chain um, across their nose or under their lip. Now, do you, you when they're things. when you're doing that uh, surgery, like on a cyst, do you have like a retractor so that, like, I know when they float teeth, sometimes they'll have this device that opens up the mouth. Mm -hmm. Do you, is there something like that going on, or do you? Yeah. So um, they would probably use almost exactly the same thing that probably. they can like okay. crank open. Yeah, the they crank open, and then yeah, mm -hmm. and then you sedate it. Yeah. Because those big animals, it's hard to bring them out of. Uh, yeah, large animals, especially horses, like we do castrations when they're standing yeah, on their own. Yeah. Like we almost never ever try to put them under right. general anesthesia because it's so like it's really dangerous for large animals to be under yeah. anesthesia, especially for a large, long time. So yeah, and then like down at the vet school, they'll have padded uh, rooms that are totally padded. Yeah, they're like a foot padding. Yeah, because... And like, when a large animal gets sedated, it basically just collapses, yeah. so they can hurt themselves yeah. being put under, and also waking up, because they're like a newborn baby, but they weigh 1,200 pounds, yeah. so they can break their legs when they're It's dangerous out for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Good, excellent points. I'll let you point to some more. Oh, I was just going to say, we did... Um, I was a zookeeper and we took an American black bear to a horse equine hospital <laughs> and we did a scope on um, the oh, bear, yeah. so same thing, but um, it was a big padded room and I mean... But you completely sedated the bear. Absolutely. <laughs> was, it, was it injectable or in inhalation? It was probably injectable. Injectable, yeah. So, you know, that's called, the whole thing, when you put an instrument into an animal, that's called endoscopy. You can go almost any place. I used to do it through the abdominal walls and look at the ovaries. And this is basically might be called intratracheal endoscopy. Yeah, they also have um, longer scopes that you can actually go down into the horse's stomachs. Um, they're just like a lot longer. Yeah, and that would be down the esophagus, obviously. <coughs> Let's give everybody a round of applause here. And do we have the ferret? Oh, the ferret's in somebody's backpack. So we, we um, 